Let's begin. Here we go! Oh. Hi, everybody! Start the insanity. You are not worried, are you? Me? No. Well, we're waiting. Hello, welcome to Super Media All Stars. We are a weekly podcast, and tonight we are talking about movies. I'm your host, John Harris, and tonight I'm joined by three other All Stars. First one being Jake Boston. Welcome to my new ASMR podcast called Super Media All Sounds. For my first object that I will talk to you about, here's how it sounds. <laughs> Moist panties. <laughs> Anthony Boric. <laughs> Annihilation. <laughs> and Brent Harris. Arise. Arise, riders of Theoden. Sh- spears shall be shaken. Shields shall be splintered. A sword day. A red day. As the sun rises. <laughs> Those are very uh, <laughs> dramatic entrances, guys. Very nice. That was that. Was, Jake, was that a nod to that Tosh Point episode? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, pickle. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's a good episode. I, I like pickles. <laughs> I like crunching on pickles. YouTube videos that do ASMR get way too many views. Oh yeah, there are a lot of people Weird that love people. that stuff. Yeah, I had yep. no idea what that was till about uh, two days ago. Mm-hmm. It's Disturbing. Weird. It's weird. Yeah, not my thing, but yeah, there you go. We got a great episode for you tonight. There's going to be a lot of things and news we're going to cover. We watched Annihilation. We're going to give you our review there and show you some thoughts. And then, as always, we're going to end with some trivia. But, guys, before we dive into things, how are you doing? And anything new that you've watched lately since we talked since Black Panther? There are a couple things. I'm going to plug a new thing here. Sure. I started on this Letterboxd app. Yeah, you mentioned it a few times. Yeah, you can follow me on uh, Letterboxd at Steelbook. Okay. Just Steelbook. And I'm going to pull up my diary of movies that I've watched since our last podcast, and I'll just tell you what star rating I got them. Is there a social media app or function to it? Yeah. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. I saw Game Night, but I'll wait until we oh, you saw Game talk Night. about it. I sure did. Nice. saw it today. Uh, when We First Met, it's a Netflix original movie with Adam Devine from Workaholics. Oh, yeah. It's like a yeah. rom-com. It's, uh, I didn't know it was a time travel movie going into it, but it is. It's like big, kind oh, of. okay. Gave that a three out of five. Hmm. Rewatched Tiny Train Your Dragon. Good. Amazing movie. Oh, still holds up. Four out of five. Yeah. Nice. Killing of a Sacred Deer. Oh my God. This movie fucked with me. Like, at, at first. This was the, I've never seen this in trailers, but who was the two main two people in it? Nicole Kidman and that, Colin Farrell. That's it. Yep. That's yeah. It. And it's amazing. And remember the guy from Dunkirk, the, one of the kids that jumps on the boat? Uh, the one that gets killed? Or one that ends spoilers. up Spoilers! Oh, yeah, spoilers. But yes. Yes. <laughs> they don't know which kid. Yeah. He's in this, too. He's the third lead. Yeah. He's so good in this movie. Everybody's good in this movie. The first half hour just kind of doles you into, like, thinking this movie's going to be horrible. And then a turn happens. And once that turn happens, it's just nonstop. It's so fucking good after that turn. Hmm. Yeah. Four and a half out of five. Nice. I watched um, the animated Godzilla on Netflix. The visuals were entertaining, but man, is that movie slow. Like I Oh, it's a movie. I thought it's not a show. It's just a movie. Well, I think the back. There's like a part one, and I think there's a part. Well, there's definitely a part two, All but right. I think they broke it up into two parts. So better or worse than that Castlevania Netflix anime? Oh, much worse. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Dude, the Castlevania Ugh. Netflix thing is awesome. I still haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's really, I, I really like Castlevania, but this one in particular, when it gets to the action, the action is really good. But the world building is almost a little too much. Gotcha. So it's like Godzilla the movie. No, Godzilla the movie is much better than this. Oh, okay. Mm. And uh, but very slow, like yeah. the movie. The movie looks like it, or the part one looks like a video game, very much so. And I thought that'd be a cool aspect. But even that begins mm. to wear on you once the people start talking, and the translation here is really bad. Hmm. Do you see the new uh, Batman anime they came out with? <clears throat> uh, Gaslight. Mi- no, there's another one. Oh, yeah, Batman. Yeah. Ninja Batman. Yeah, yeah. Like, what the fuck? That one looks really good. I know nothing about it. I just heard the name Ninja Batman. I'm like, maybe, but not a big anime guy. But like, hasn't he already been ninja enough? You would think so, but now he's like super Ninja Batman. And the Joker looks messed up. Oh, does he? Yeah, it looks really dark and twisted. All right, I'm in. Hmm. Yeah, check like out... The, like check... the comic look, like bandaged up in his face, or... 
I don't know. You think he looks psycho in American version? He looks super psycho in an anime version. Oh yeah, villains in anime look crazy to begin with. So yeah, I can only imagine. Check out that trailer, Batman. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's anime. It's, it's Bat- called Ninja Batman. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Check that out, and also check out the which is like Gotham a, by Gaslight. That's it. Mm-hmm. That one's actually looks pretty good. I, is, I want to check that out. We'll get around to it. I finished uh, Altered Carbon, and <laughs> how'd that go? <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Was it as good as the first half that you? Uh yeah. Like it was it it takes a twist a couple episodes before like so in episode seven or eight the twist happens and I wasn't really expecting that but it was a nice it was awesome because I didn't see it coming and then I was kind of worried because there was I think there was two or three episodes left and I'm like how are they gonna tie this up now that I know this but they still did an excellent job Anthony. I really haven't been watching much. I've been busy with other stuff. So <laughs> yeah, um, like your birthday. Yeah, Aww. but it's his birthday. Last year in my twenties. Here we go. Yeah, birthday. It's your birthday. If I die, carry me and uh, Louis uh, they me All right. That being said, let's go ahead and jump into the news portion of our show. And there's only a few things we're gonna cover, and we're also gonna end it with a segment we call Review Roundup. Just some reviews that came out in the movies recently. But the first thing in the news is Danny Boyle. Supposedly creating a new script and proposing it for the new 007 movie. And he is proposing this to MGM, who is in charge of the 007 series. Going over Danny Boyle's, like, I don't know, movie career. He's got Transpotting, which was very popular. I think the, these are all things that he's read up or had some part in the script. Or directed. 28 Days Later. 28 Days Later. Like that one, I mean, it's not nothing stellar. I mean, Slumdog Millionaire did really well. Slumdog Millionaire done in Bond, I could see doing very well. Just his style. I don't know. I could definitely see that. 127 Hours. He did that one too. Yeah, that was a turd, but that wasn't bad. Uh, it wasn't great. Mainly what? just because of the subject. Yeah, but. there's a guy stuck in a rock and you're stuck there for an hour and a half with but him. But you got on the other side of Danny Boyle, you had the original guys, Neil Purvis and Robert Wade, who gave us Skyfall, Spectre, and Casino Royale. Did they do Quantum too or no? I don't think so. They weren't okay. credited for that. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was the writer strike. Never mind. Yeah. Mm hmm. But those movies are really good on their own. I mean, Spectre wasn't great, but it was still a, a 007 movie. And I don't have any problem with these guys doing it again. I just think, to, is it uh, okay to give new blood to 007? Because it works. It really does work. But those movies those guys created have been really good, too. I've never been the biggest fan of Skyfall, either. I've just thought that was okay. Javier Bardem was the best part of that movie, by far. Yeah, I love Skyfall. And I, like I'm one of the few who really like Spectre. I know it wasn't widely received well, but I like Spectre enough. Yeah. I'd be okay with these guys keeping it, but would you guys like to see New Blood coming to the 007 through a new script with Danny Boyle? I think Danny Boyle is, he would make enough changes. As long as Daniel Craig doesn't come back. As long as, like, there's a new Bond with a new look by Danny Boyle. I don't know. I've had this bad image of a different writing style and then maybe a different main star will be too much of a change. And we'll kind of ruin this franchise. We'll see. It worked for Casino Royale, but Casino Royale was also kind of a reboot. Yeah, but I instantly <laughs> fell in love with Daniel Craig. Yeah. That opening scene will, like, forever stay in my memory. I know. I kind of feel like you need to find, like, a nobody. Like, Daniel Craig had been in movies, but he wasn't known for anything other than Bond when he got it. Right. So, I feel like Michael B. Jordan might be, like, too obvious of a guess. Plus, I don't think he's a good fit for that role. I think he's too young still. I don't think he has, like, the suave to him. You're crazy. Uh, yeah, he does. You're, you're insane. <clears throat> he's a good actor. I'm well, not saying he's not a good actor. I'm just saying he doesn't have that Bond feeling to him. You mm. should you should watch Creed. Okay. He's suave as fucking Creed. That's the documentary about the band, right? That, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> there goes my hero. Yes. It's, it's Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. No. All right, let's jump into our next story, and that is a really short one. Uh, I always butcher his last name. Tommy Wiseau. That's it. And... Greg uh, Sestero are working on a new movie. And the trailer came out calling it Best Friends slash like tease with the name Fiends. I think that's what they're trying to tease. The R is in parentheses. Yeah. Teasing a clever name there. But it's going to be a limited run. The question I want to ask you guys is, obviously this is coming off the hype of the disaster artist with James Franco. Do you think this becomes another cult hit from these two? Yeah, for the cult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for, for everything the... else, I don't. It, it won't. I don't think it'll do well. For the room lovers, it's just more content for them to eat up. Yeah. Because at the end of the trailer, it's like part one of two yeah, are coming in two I parts. I couldn't be any less excited for it. It's gotten really good reviews, surprisingly. And it honestly looks sharp. I hope like, so. It looks well done, but I might see it. I don't really care <laughs> to see it. All right, our next story is real quick. And that also is, I'm just interested to see what you guys think here. Rush Hour 4 
is supposedly happening according to Chris Tucker on a podcast he was on recently with ESPN. You understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? War! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! yeah. What is it good for? Absolutely not. Sing it again. Ah! Oh, we must have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> what do you want to talk about Rush Hour 4? Fuck Rush Hour 4. Yeah, there is no it. other news for this other than Chris Tucker saying it's going to happen and Jackie Chan wants it to happen. Yeah, you know who the director of all three Rush Hour movies were? Brett Redden. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And he's uh, kind of done it, with Hollywood for the moment. Yep. Yeah, he is. So Not that someone couldn't do that. It's pretty simple. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it, Chris Tucker has nothing else going on. He really doesn't. So he's just like, yeah, Rush Hour 4, guys. It's happening. Yeah, Go on, make it happen, sure. please. Okay. My but, whole comedy but, bit didn't work out for me, uh-huh. so Rush Hour 4. Yeah. I finally remember Rush Hour 1 and 2. I really liked both those movies. I never saw 3. I don't think too many people did. But I, I liked 1 and 2. Hmm. So I would rather watch... Oh, here we go. Beverly Hills Ninja four times than watch all four of these stupid movies. Wow. Beverly Hills Ninja is one of the greatest movies <laughs> I, ever. Which is why I think I'm okay watching it four times in a row rather than watching that bullshit. Uh, they're all great movies. Oh, decent. If this happens, I'd be excited. This so. is just like Beverly Hills Cop 4 or Lethal Weapon 5. Like all these things yeah. that want to come back and or never will. <clears throat> the Die Hard whatever. Five. Die Hard Year One. It's uh, going to be a prequel. Yeah, no one wants it. Just stop. Mr. Tucker does, and supposedly it's coming. Yeah, because he needs a paycheck. Yeah, he Bad. doesn't have any money. He's fucking doing podcasts for Christ's sakes. Well, Those aren't paying. That's sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we know firsthand. <laughs> All right, it's, uh, the next one is kind of a follow up to our Black Panther podcast, and that was Black Panther is crushing it in the box office, but opening weekend uh, turned out to be two hundred and two million dollars, blowing away any of our predictions. That we originally placed like a month ago for this movie. It was insane. I think the highest we went was 127. I think it's yeah. the highest that one of us bid. It was you, John. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. You <laughs> son of a bitch. Uh, that being said, it's now this, we're just wrapping up our second weekend with Black Panther, and it's still pulling in $108 million on its second weekend opening. Uh-huh. And I think uh, there was a quote today from IGN that is the second biggest opening ever for a Second movie? weekend. Second weekend. Yeah. Which is insane. Like it was Force Awakens and now Black Panther. It's already beat tons of other movies just in its first two weeks. Its first week alone beat Justice League's total runtime. Like total uh, gross. Yeah. It's insane. And speaking of gross, like on Box Office Mojo, it was like number eight of uh, comic books adapted to movies. It's like already at number eight on that chart and it's like climbing up with Avengers still being number one. Mm-hmm. But if it keeps this pace and I can't think of any movies that would challenge this really the box office coming yeah. soon hey anthony since you weren't on the last black panther podcast if you were to give us like a paragraph review and star rating what would you give it good movie one of the best origins that i have seen like i said i loved michael b jordan in this i want to see him more as a villain i thought he played a villain pretty well i, I never like how they get rid of the villain in the end um however i did kind of like his ending but I kind of want, I always want more. So, <clears throat> star rating? Uh, three. <clears throat> Solid three. Solid three? Solid three. Okay. But we were all three and a half. So, so. Yeah. did you like, you didn't like the final fight, but you liked his death? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's, I think we had that pretty yep. much the same. Getting back to its numbers, um, Black Panther op- originally opened on a four day holiday weekend, being President's Day the following Monday. And its total four day run was 242 million. Yeah. Who makes $40 million on a Monday? Right. That's insane. Yeah. So. Holiday, bro. So, Still President's Day. Yeah. Do they move an Avengers to February to make these numbers? No. No. I think Black Panther came out at the right time. Yes. We were deprived of a decent movie for a while. Yep. Also, African American movie during Black History Month. It's yeah. just true. It helps. And there's nothing else in its way to like compete with it. Yeah. Like yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it later, but Annihilation and Game Night definitely weren't competition for it at all. Plus, it was kind of a trendsetter for a Marvel movie, so that all helped a lot, too. That's yeah. true. I mean, people are, losing, theaters. people are losing their crap over this movie. It's good, but people rank it as like one of the best Marvel movies, and it's Ooh, not. I don't think that. Yeah, I would agree. I would say top half, but definitely not like close to like top three. I'd right. say top third. We'll get into that when we get to our phase three of our Road to Infinity War series. Yeah. So, stay tuned to that. On uh, this last bit of the news is going to be called Review Roundup, and this basically we just talk about recent movies and the Metacritic scores they've been getting. And starting with the Black Panther movie, Metacritic, Critic Review is kind of averaged out to be 88. 
do you think that's uh, going with what we know of the critics' reviews and how well it's being received? That make, kind of makes sense. About a 7 out of 10. Yeah. Our next movie is Game Night. Uh, that came out this weekend, and it's pulling in at Metacritic Ed at uh, 66, yep. with the user reviews coming in a little bit higher, I think at like a 7.5 or 9 or something. And I did go see this today, actually. And what was your general thoughts about it? I heard a lot of really positive things going into it, and I thought it was a better than average comedy, but it was uh, I was wanting to give it a way higher score than what I did. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5. Hmm. Still pretty good. You were wanting to give it a higher score? I, d- I just wanted to like it more. Yeah, uh, I, I wanted it what... to be funny. Yeah. Did you go see it too? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. No, it is it is funny. Okay. And the way that it's filmed is definitely more like a, a thriller and not a comedy. This one was weird because like some jokes totally hit. And then some jokes, I was the only one to laugh in the theater and nobody else did anything. Oh, boy. Really? And that's the weirdest part about going to see like a comedy in theaters. It's just like if everybody's into the movie, you get a way better experience. Sure. Yeah, but yeah, there were some there were some clunkers. There were some that nobody laughed at. There were some that like did like movie trivia stuff, and I'm like, oh, that's funny. I'll laugh at that, and nobody else like understood it. Yikes! Yeah. Hmm. So now- I don't know. You can probably wait on this one, honestly, unless you have a big group of friends to see it with. Yeah. Yeah. Our next movie is kind of one that we saw during uh, the trailers during Ship of Water. Is a 1517 to Paris. This is the newest from Clint Eastwood, and this one was kind of different because it talks about a recent. Um, events that happened with the terrorists on a train and about some soldiers who uh, pretty much became heroes from saving the day. But the, what's special about this movie is that the people who, who actually saved the day in real life played the act or were the actors, quote unquote, in this movie. But according to Craig's review, that does not work. Consensus has been that this is one of Eastwood's worst movies. Yep, that's what I've heard too, and that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's pulling like a Metacritic score of 45. What are you guys' thoughts on bringing real life um, individuals like these as these soldiers to pl- to relive and play a role in a movie? Well, I heard this movie was kind of like Sully, like the last movie that Clint Eastwood did. Yeah, into the fact that it's one event, like two minutes, and he tries to do like a run time of like a hundred minutes. Yeah, and it's just like you're stretching out everything, and there's like no real real good plot. The main meat that you want to see doesn't last for that long. Right. So, and it doesn't help that non-actors are trying, are the leads of this movie. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that, that angle could be a good hook, but then it's like the payoff was there. I get that, why they're trying to do it, but it, that just isn't going to work that well. The critics were honest, like, respect them for trying, but the honest opinion is it just, it takes you out of the movie because the acting is so bad. Yeah. But our last one is uh, Early Man, which was a... Animated film from the creators of Wallace and Gromit, kind of a claymation look to it. Um, they kind of stick with the same model here, but this one, unfortunately, did not live up to, I'm not sure if it had any hype, but pulled in a Metacritic score of 68. These movies are definitely like marketed towards a European crowd. Yeah. And in America, they're very hit or miss. Like, Wallace and Gromit is okay. The, these guys are most lonely for, probably most recognized for is Chicken Run and Wallace and Gromit. Yeah, they came out with a movie like four years ago called Shaun the Sheep. See, I, don't know, yeah. I know what that is. Yeah, that yeah. movie's so good. Is it? I've never yeah, seen it. But, but nobody saw it. But I think on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, it's it, like the 90th percentile. Wow. Really? It's good shit. Just it doesn't have a market over here or a very small market over here. Hmm. And the last movie for review roundup is actually the main portion of our show, which we're jumping into next. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the meat portion of our show, and that is going to be Annihilation. This is like some hipster meat. It's, I don't even know what you would do with it. Like, I don't know. I this don't is know like a meat this. you're eating, and then it's also taking place in another reality or dimension meat. It's just a mind bender of a meat. It's meat that's been on the counter for a couple weeks. This is like Japanese meat to Americans. We don't know what's going on. It's just like, what is this? <laughs> Uh, basically, we all saw this opening night Thursday, and this is the newest movie from... Alex Garland? Thank you. Can I run down what he's done? Yeah, go for it. The one other movie he's directed is Ex Machina, which is very good, but he's also wrote a lot of movies. He wrote uh, Dread. The new one? Yeah, the new one nice. with Carl Urban. He wrote uh, 28 Days Later. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's wrote a couple... He's really into sci-fi. 
Like that's his that's his meat. Yeah. Huh. So that being said, this first portion will be spoiler free. We're going to go over some general thoughts about this movie, some acting, visuals, music, some stuff that will be spoiler free. And then we're actually going to go hardcore in the spoiler section. There's a lot to this movie that is spoilers because the trailer did a really good job of not showing too much of what's actually going on in this sci-fi thriller. And then we'll, of course, end it with a spoiler free section going over numbers, critic reviews, our own five-star review. And then we'll kind of compare it to our thoughts to the other Alex Garland films. But guys, now that it's what been three or four days since we've seen it, what was your uh, first impressions leaving? I really liked it coming out of it, except for like the last 20, 30 minutes. That's where it just hits a brick wall. Not all of it bothered me, just a couple parts bothered me. And Which, that's like what stuck in my head the most. Yeah. For me, it was like um, <clears throat> for the adventurous types like myself. Uh, if you've ever walked past a container of jelly beans, that's gonna be a bad metaphor. I can um, just tell right now. And you're like, "Hey, I wonder what it's like to stick like a small handful of jelly beans in my mouth at the same time." This is what that movie was like. Now you get the first couple bites in your mouth, right? And you maybe get like the vanilla, the lemon, the cotton candy, maybe some berries. You know, sure, it's not bad. It's, it's like oddly. All right, for but, how well it's mixing together. But, but then you get like bean boozled. And then you get to the fourth or fifth bite, and then you start getting grass, popcorn butter, jelly beans version of coffee, which I imagine what butt tastes like. Yeah. It's terrible. Well, in bean boozled, there's a little like vomit jelly bean. Yes. Yeah, it's just like it's supposed to be tutti frutti. Right. It looks the same, tastes like puke. Right. So you get like two or three of those bad ones in there, and then you've got this gelatin, sugary turd sitting in your mouth. And the whole thing is just overcome by the one bad or two bad jelly beans in there. And you swallow it and... Okay, all right, I got it. We got the, uh, we got the metaphor. Then, you swallow and, it and then... And then we got you it. have that then, lingering bad taste in your mouth for two to three days afterwards. And also a ball of jelly beans in your gut. Right. You don't want to poop that out. Yep. It's going to suck coming out. Exactly. That was much too long. I think a little exaggerated for a jelly bean metaphor. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's great. That was spot on. <laughs> Anthony. That's good. I'm along the same line as Jake. I didn't know anything about that, which I love those movies going yeah. in, having no idea. I loved the all girl team that went in. Uh, thought they did a really good job building the story. We had a background. We had a, an issue that was going on, but I felt like I've seen the movie before sure. multiple times. Um, and it's, yeah, Jake's right. The last 30 minutes, something happens, and I just, I was ready to walk out. I, well, I didn't even want to see how it finished. It's just where it becomes a totally different movie. Yeah, in my opinion, and yeah. it's so predictable. Like it's, I knew that part happened, and it's like this is how it's gonna end. I looked at my wife and I said, "This is how it's gonna end," and then it was like, "Oh, well, okay, well, we saw it." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you guys know I'm a big sci-fi buff. It's no surprise there. Yeah, I think once the movie ended, like <laughs> we all sat in one row, and you and your lady friend sat in the row above <clears throat> us. We all just looked at each other and were like, oh, John fucking creamed over this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did, I really, you th- did you like it more than Blade Runner? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. No. And I actually do have a few tips with this movie. But as far as sci-fi <laughs> goes, uh, I, I really loved this movie. I, uh, I, mean, like, I don't actually don't think you guys know. It didn't make me think too much like about complexities in life and all that jazz. But maybe just think about the <clears throat> mo- stuff that happens in the movie and what it means to the overall plot and what just kind of the direction this movie went. Okay, and that's my thinking too. It's not, it raises some questions at the end, but it doesn't, like, it doesn't treat you very stupidly. Right. In my opinion, like, there's something that happens that you're not supposed to understand. You're supposed to, like, throw your own interpretation out there. See, but it seems like a bad shot at that. Like, they were trying to do it. Like, you can solve it for yourself. What do you think happened? Is that so bad? I don't think that... I don't think the going about that way is bad. I just don't think they did a good job of it. Uh, see, I'm going to argue that counterpoint more. It's so in spoilers. But yeah. someone asked me what Anthony asked me if I compared it like to Blade Runner. Blade Runner is known for talking or making references to society in real life and making points like that. I don't think this movie does that at all. I think it just takes a story, has a concept to it. Any questions you ask is retained with objectively in the film. And that's why I like this movie better than Blade Runner. Because sure. I don't like the Blade Runner type of sci-fi. I like this type of sci-fi that tells like a very distinct story yeah. and tells it very well. I know the last 30 minutes does its own thing, but I kind of like interpretation. Like Some of my favorite horror movies of all time do that. Horror sci-fi. 
Sure. And I'll get into it in spoilers, but... I think you guys kind of already hit on this already, but just real, real quick recap... We had expectations a little bit going into this movie as far as sci-fi goes. We didn't reveal get too much from the trailer. <clears throat> see, I, I didn't see the trailer for this movie. I only watched like TV spots that didn't show anything. It yeah. just showed like a big bubble. Yeah. yeah. But, and, and for the listeners, like, if you have any expectations about this movie or didn't know nothing about it, it's going to serve you. Be- I would argue it's going to serve you better when you go see this. I don't Most know definitely. that anybody would have expectations because literally they don't show anything inside. Well, let's, yeah. say, let's say you're an Alex Garland fan and you saw Ex Machina. Like that, that, Ex Machina was really good. And I, I like that movie. So maybe you hold that standard of his film pedigree to this movie. I think you're going to get. I think you're going to get that payoff if you're an Alex Garland fan. And I think if you're a sci-fi buff, you're going to like it. I think you're going to like this movie. I think so too. Like a lot of people are saying, this is smart sci-fi. It, this one isn't that smart. It's just well done. Yeah, and I think the questions you ask are open to interpretation, and everybody can have different interpretations of this movie because it's not clear cut by any means. No, I think this movie tells one hell of a story, and the last half hour is very divisive. Yeah. So putting story aside real quick, the acting. <laughs> Anthony- Brent looks like he is about to blow. <laughs> Anthony mentioned an all female cast, and I think it actually really works. It works great for this movie. I actually liked. Um, <clears throat> let me call that the core four. Was there four or five women? Five, 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 and they worked really well. Each had their each had their personalities. Obviously, this movie's this main star is Natalie Portman, and Oscar Isaac is in it for a little bit, but he's definitely like a. Very much a side character. Yeah. Can I talk about Tessa Thompson? Yeah, do it. As like the nerdy brains. Like, what is she, like a biologist? Uh, yeah, ex- physicist. Physicist. Yeah. Okay. She's amazing in this movie. She was my favorite character in this movie by far. Um, Brent, you mentioned a lady you really liked that was also in um, Hateful Eight. Yeah. Jennifer, Jennifer Jason. Jennifer Jason Lee. Oh, I yeah. love mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, yeah. She, she's plays good. A, she plays a doctor or a psychologist in this movie, and she's one of the main leads, and... We'll get more into her character in spoilers, but I actually liked her character. Her, she does her, yeah. the acting's good here. Oh, yeah, there's there a little go. bit of killer character development to her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, I didn't like what the movie did with her, but uh, everything up to that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah, and then Natalie Portman is still good. Like she plays her, she every role she does is pretty pretty good. Yeah, and she has a couple mixes with her character. Like she's a scientist slash like. Uh, Ex military, yeah, yeah, which is like a nice kind of nice twist. Yeah, and the way that like she reacts to things definitely like shows those two sides, like mel- m- melting, melting, merging, merging together. Yeah, yeah, like she keeps her cool in high tense situations. Uh huh. Yeah. Now, without going to spoilers, this movie, the trailer kind of shows. I'm not sure if they, do they call it the shimmer in the trailer. I think so. Yeah. So basically, it looks like a mystical wall. Honestly, it looks like if you've ever blown up a bubble. It's got that like weird coloration to it. Right. Looks exactly like that. It is what it looks like. And then especially like when they're inside and the light's shining through it and it's just like prisms mm-hmm. coming down, like yeah. multicolored everything. Yeah. yeah. I like the visual effects. Yeah, visual effects in this movie are awesome. And there's actually I just want to call it the ambiance of this film. So good. Masterfully done in my opinion. Yeah. There's a lot, um I don't know if any of a lot of you know the Last of Us. Yeah. There's a lot of Last of Us imagery in this. See, I got that, and I got, um, there's particular scenes that definitely give me some Prometheus vibes. Yep. I would say just, like, the squad in general is very, like, Aliens-esque. Yeah. Um, Prometheus slash Arrival, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Sure. Like, <clears throat> the girl from Aliens reminds me of the Gina Rodriguez character in mm-hmm. this movie, like, to a T. Yeah. Also spoilers, but there's some, dis- like, the imagery in this film is not necessarily, it could be scary, I wasn't really scared in this movie as I was just like cringing, disturbing scenery. <clears throat> like it doesn't do it. It's th- just high tense. Yes. There you go. Very tense situations. Yeah. Like but you, you, there's a couple scenes where you literally are on the edge of your seat for probably a good 120 seconds. Well, there's mm-hmm. one particular scene where I remember that like you're there's something very intense going on the screen and like you want to look away because it's a little disturbing, but you keep watching it anyway because it gets really good. No, I watched you, everything. I, yeah, so did I. Yeah. Well, I never turned my head, but it's kind of like oh boy, uh, this is you? this is tense. You, oh. I'm pretty sure you pulled the popcorn bunk up. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that being said, visual like visuals are great. Uh, the only thing I want to mention else is is the music. They're at the ending, the 30 minutes that it's gonna be a controversy here. Also has some great music to help set the atmosphere of this movie kind of reminds me of another sci-fi movie that i'll talk about in spoilers but yeah yeah, it definitely has like a tone that it's setting and music definitely helps right this movie like goes through three or four different genres of film i I like that a lot about it very much a hodgepodge yes yeah and the hodgepodge works for me i thought so too yeah (laughs) Uh, but the looks that we're getting sounds like we need to get into the spoiler 
section. Oh, God. Here we go. You ready? Spoiler. 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 Eh. Eh. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> you just <laughs> did it. You're doing it pretty I mean, good. Was, yeah. All right. Putting away our spoiler warnings there. It's time to get into some heavy stuff here. And I think it's going to be, what makes it so great is that it's going to be open to interpretation. I'm interested to see what you guys actually think of some of these scenes in this movie. Let's just go ahead and talk about the main story and plot here and what we think is going on. Because it's, like I said, it's opened up, but we, we know from watching the movie that this shimmer atmosphere is changing everyone's DNA complex, right? Yeah. And I want to say that part I found very interesting. Well, the first hint you get at that is... Like through like found footage camcorder stuff to where right. like Oscar Isaac cuts open a guy and his organs are right. moving like a big ass earthworm inside of him. Yeah, that was that was the that was the tense scene I was talking about. Like, oh, that was your tense scene. Well, just like peeling the cutting the skin and peeling it off. Oh, that was yeah. Intense. Yeah, that visual wasn't like the the intestines moving wasn't tense for me. It was the cutting mm-hmm. and just of the skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that wasn't that weird. I felt like my teeth hurt during that. Yeah, segment. Well, yeah, just anytime when like something like endears pain it's just like oh god I, I ate ice cream too fast well that like the teeth. For, when they first start t- talking about this dna shifting stuff they mentioned the foliage and then we get that first scene with like the gator and had like a weird mouth inside of its actual jaw you guys remember it, that yeah that part was cool when it was dead yeah. and they were yeah. examining it yeah when it was happening and like grabbed the girl and dragged her down i didn't care yeah it was just like a i don't know a change in pace pretty much like yeah. what what gator <clears throat> Is that fast? I don't, would you guys agree that this this is a a form of DNA splicing because things are like this alligator is getting mixed with the flora. Things are not where they're supposed to be as far as this DNA mixing. Mm-hmm. I would call that splicing, pretty much, right? Through nature or I through. Don't know if I, can, I guess uh, it's it's unlike anything. Given yeah, exactly given the bear thing, like that doesn't look like splicing, really. Oh, I would disagree because the bear uses that girl's voice to lure out her, their friend. Well, I know, but it's also like decomposing. Yeah, but it's because its DNA is shifting around. I would say there's no explanation to anything. Just things start changing in very weird ways you haven't seen before. How does that work for you guys? Did you guys like that? I like it. Like everything in the bubble is a giant MacGuffin. Like anything is possible. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I like that. This that, is like a really fucked up Willy Wonka. Yeah, that, that bothered me. Why? Because I wanted like a definitive thing i guess what the guy with his abdomen you know what his insides look like it looked like an enormous version of a little fish they showed in the water oh i thought it's just intestines that's curling. what i thought too i thought it just looked like a giant worm just moving around oh yeah what yeah, yeah. I didn't... that's what i'm talking about but it looked exactly like that fish thing oh i didn't get the it. fish was like an eel okay yeah i didn't make the fish connection no oh that's what i was taking was everything was combining Oh no! Given uh, the human and bushes and see, I, mar- I correlated that more <clears throat> to like he was imagining his skin was shifting. I was interpreting that the soldiers have been there for so long that something's going on with the internals as well. It well, could, it could be his intestines or it could be a creature. Everyone saw it though. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like all, the girls that went in here, the max they were in the bubble in the shimmer was a week. These guys were in here for like two, three months, I think. Yeah, right. And not to mention, well, not to me- but he was gone for a year. Yeah, so. It, a long amount of time to where, like, the DNA is able to just, like, fuck with you even more. Right. And there's a sense of time confusion because they... When is Nally there? Po- I would think so because when Nellie Porton walks into the shimmer, like, she's woke up in a sleep and she meant... She imagined... Or she imagined something had happened. They're missing portions from their food supplies. Yeah, they don't remember setting up a tent and it's been oh, three days. You're talking about that. You're yeah. saying there's a, like a lapse that they don't remember. Well, I think yeah. there's, I think time's different inside this shimmer bubble. Okay, see, that, I thought that too, but like, is I don't, it? yeah, no, I don't, I don't think that. I just think the mind is like playing tricks on them. Oh, okay, I got gotcha, Like gotcha. they're going into a different environment and they just kind of like lose. See, but where is they it are. because like he comes back with a shaven face and like all of them are not well, like fully grown bearded yeah, men? That, that's not him though. No, it's not. We'll get into that a little bit later. <clears throat> yeah. Let's say, let's save that. for Yeah, now. but even the guys in the film. Yeah, the guy in the film, the Oscar Isaac that blew himself up, had a beard. Hmm. But it's, it's safe to say, like, the premise to the events of this movie, you guys liked. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Other than the concrete that Brent wanted, but it wasn't concrete enough. I don't know. It set up a lot of th- cool things that I thought were really cool, but they just didn't follow through for me. That's fair. And it dropped the ball a lot. That's See, I, I liked them jumping around from thing to thing. Some things I didn't like, like the crocodile was just okay. 
Um, I really liked the foliage that grew into like human shapes. That was awesome. I loved that scenery. That was awesome. And since we're talking about that, how Tessa Thompson just kind of like gives up See, and yeah. decides to turn into one of those. Is right. that foliage that turns into humans or is that humans turning into foliage? I would say that humans turn into foliage. Like okay. she just, um, there's like a pressure on her to turn and you can see like all the cuts that she <clears throat> had to like feel something and she's yeah. not feeling anything. Right. So she just finally gives up. <clears throat> And just like turns into one of the grass flower human types. Okay. I just want to specify that so, it wasn't just vines growing into human shape. See, no. Hang on, hang on. I got a lot. Of, there's a lot of po- a lot of good points you guys just mentioned. I kind of want to dive in just a little bit more. Sure. As far as the plants go, I was under the impression that the humans can turn into the humans can turn into plants. The plants are also taking forms of the humans that have died. Or because the ecosystems are combining and these cells are combining. Cause yeah, we only see one way that this is done right. through Tessa Thompson. But yeah, the inter- you can interpret anything in this movie. And I think that's what I like a lot about it. Right. And they make a special point to talk about the foliage and how it's different colors. There's, there's a mix of breeds here because DNA is shifting. And also to the Emma Thompson point, when she kind of left, I felt like she left on a good note. Like she wasn't sad. She was just accepting of life and... She didn't want to. She didn't want. She want to die like Shepard did yeah, she, in fear. She didn't want to fight it anymore. I think is pretty much what she said. She's just like, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go. Don't follow me. Right. Because she was like in peace. Yeah. It's pretty much like when a person commits suicide. That's what I kind of got from it. And yeah, uh, that part was awesome. Compared to suicide, though, I feel like this was much more uh, peaceful. She wasn't at stress. Oh yeah, definitely. But I. You don't know like how much the environment in the shimmer like messed with her head. Oh sure, sure. She it seemed like she got over all of like the body mutilations that she was doing to herself, but right. some of that might have resurfaced again. Like a lot of the stuff is left open to your own interpretation. Mine was just like, yeah, I like you saw vines growing out of her scars as she was walking away. Right. So I was like, okay, I'm just letting everything go. Right. And then you turn around and she's not there. That was a very impactful scene. It was awesome. Uh, we also talked about just real quickly was um, Shepard's character. Uh, she is like the mom who lost her daughter or son to leukemia. One of the great lines that they share with Natalie Portman is when they're in a boat paddling. And they, she made a point to say, I don't know why, I really like this line, but she said when she lost her daughter, she lost two things that day. Her daughter and her old self, which I really liked that line because they made a point to say in this movie is profiling the soldiers who are going in as usually damaged. And each we find out each of these characters kind of has a story to them that could be, be viewed as damaged, yeah. which I really liked. Just mm-hmm. a good plot aspect to it. Yep. Um, I think one of the things we also need to talk about is we talked about this in the spoiler-free section: the tense, the tensity. And that one of the best scenes for this was the bear scene. Do you guys like that bear scene? There's a lot going on there. This is my favorite scene of the year so far. Yeah, it was good. I was so was just yeah, I was captivated about everything that was going on not only did they create like an awesome monster like this genetically mutated pig that has killed somebody and has like sucked up her voice or can like mute or man bear pig yeah it's pretty much like ditto they can (laughs) say something that sounds exactly like them to like lure out their prey so fucking cool right like i can say it doesn't need to be explained but was it um the paramedic Anya, Anya Thornton, who plays the Latina uh, paramedic. During this scene, she kind of loses her mind and ties up the other three. Yeah, I didn't see any of this coming either. Yeah, like and she's calling out them on being a li- Nellie Portman on being a liar. Yeah, like you could see um, Gina, the doctor, Gina Rodriguez is who she, the actress. But you could see her starting to like question Natalie Portman. Right. But I didn't see her like tying everybody up. Yeah, me neither. But then she gave reasonings as to why she did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she thinks everybody's lying to her. Or she <clears throat> yeah, she didn't to... know who to trust. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And her herself was pretty much losing her mind at this point. Well, Which... she... she well, is, did, is she, though? Because she's... I mean, she tied them up for perfectly good reasons. And I she know. even asked, like, oh, you think I'm going crazy, right? Well, she made also point to say she looked at her hands and she thinks she sees her skin moving. Right, but don't they all kind of see that? Because Natalie Portman does that at one time, too. She, like, looks at her... Her index finger and kind of sees she it. Tests her blood. Yeah, I didn't Which get is into moving. this yet. Yeah, but in the from our viewer, did we actually see? Do you guys remember her? Was her skin shifting when her the paramedic looked at her hand? And that, that I don't. I don't I, know. That's one of the reasons I want to watch this again to watch for those details. I don't remember that? And that's one gotcha. other thing. Where the fuck does a bear come from in like Florida? It's on the coast somewhere. Yeah, but this bubble has its own rules. Like a stop. bear? It could be. So why not? Yeah. <sighs> and it was more like a boar than a bear. 
It looks like a board to me. Regardless. Oh. Amber pick. <laughs> that, that's what I told Brett when we were watching it. <laughs> he did. But. I liked it because like the bear doesn't have vision anymore and re- responded to like how people responded to it. Yeah, his face is like rotting off. Yeah, and it was so it good. It looks so cool. And oh my God, when that bear pig thing ripped the jaw oh, off of the yeah. paramedic, yeah. holy yeah. fuck. Just ripped her face that was, off. That was so cool. Yeah. And it's just, I was so captivated with everything that was happening with the bear just like everybody's trying to stay quiet and i don't know if the bear can't see anything or whatnot but but because what because you know quietly like sh- like shaking in fear because they're breathing heavy yeah but it doesn't seem to notice them because it just like walks sticks a hit its head in between them and walks around them mm-hmm. and then what's her face comes back in yeah the paramedic yeah oh god Oh my god, they're so fucking good. That's it's gonna be one of my top scenes of this year, and it's February, and oh, right. uh, it's so good. Uh, and then let's go ahead and jump into the pretty much. I think it's gonna be the main discussion here is what's going on with the last thirty minutes of this movie slash the ending. And uh, I don't know how you guys want to go about this. We want to, we first want to talk about what we think happened here because we have to do scene by scene. Like I say, we do alien stuff first, and then like the last five minutes next. Sure. So let's talk about let's go ahead and talk about this lighthouse. The lighthouse we walk in, we see skeletons on the outside, which made me think to believe that people have obviously made it here before. Yeah, and when the movie sorry <laughs> when the movie first starts, it starts with like this asteroid crashing into the lighthouse. Did any of you think that was a alien? Because no. I didn't. No, no, I wouldn't have gotten an alien. Either did, yeah. but I wasn't quite sure it was an asteroid because the lighthouse wasn't destroyed. It was like cloud of dust. It was a perfectly it just made a hole. formed sphere and like yeah. crashes through it and then goes into the ground and then makes a yeah. I guess I just assumed it was an asteroid. Up to, yeah. up to the last twenty minutes of this movie, we're never assumed that it's an alien. Yeah, and we're it, we're just going along with Natalie Portman, like, let's get to the lighthouse. This is our end goal. Let's see what's there. So once they get to the lighthouse, um, we see what happened to Oscar Isaac's character. But we also see a camera footage of like a second Oscar Isaac. And he's just, like you said, just this emotional uh, being thing that's just walking around. Right. So we, jumping ahead, we jump to Portman's character, gets to the bottom of the lighthouse. But at the bottom of this hole is this chamber. We find Ventress is here, and we, at least we think it's Ventress, because she's talking, she's mummering. And correct me if I'm wrong, but is her face different before she starts talking? She to... doesn't have eyes anymore. They're just like... yeah. But when she talks so, to so when she switches and talks to <clears throat> Natalie, she has eyes again, right? Yeah, so let let's stop here. Do you think that's her, or do you think that's the clone? I think it's her trying to fight this off. Well, I mean, here's my thought. I'm not sure if she's her. They made the movie made a point to say Ventress is in it to find it, and uh, Natalie Portman's character is in it to fight it. So I think when Ventress finds it, but I don't think necessarily she just wanted to find it. Because she was like... She wanted ex- answers. I know, but it's also what she was saying is that it's expanding and that it needed to stop, though it's going to be here in no time. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, if she could have stopped it, she would have, but she definitely wanted to know like why this was happening. Right. I think. One of the Anthony's scenes that he hates the most is when she starts like imploding and light starts shooting out of her. Well, she literally says, Annihilation! Yeah, and right. then starts puking out light. Right. Like it's Yeah, it's almost like lava. It just starts... Yeah. So dumb. So, I, I hated that part, too. So here's my thing about that scene is I think that was supposed to be climactic, but it really wasn't. For what, here's what I got. And you what guys was some, supposed to be so climactic about it? The light shimmering, the music's really kicking in at this point, and she's kind of like morphing into something. And we this is like after we, she disappears, we get the first look at what appears to be an alien organism, right? This cloud that needs some kind of dna presence in order to change well, yeah the coolest part about that was when it was like puking out of her and then natalie portman got the gun it yeah. started shooting at it it just ends up turning into this like human-like being with bullet holes like the way they're shot just arched out everywhere that part was really fucking creepy it was creepy i liked that part quite a bit yeah do you think <clears throat> do you think vinch's character because we know this creature can mimic right mm-hmm. and it takes blood and it tra- it can make a duplicate of itself do you think Ventress didn't work because of her cancer? Like it didn't want to duplicate her because hmm. she was a flawed body? Hmm. Yeah, but it uses That's her. That's interesting. It uses her as a host, but and then one, it explodes it, her and then re it, it, it reestablishes like as a form, but now like Portman's there, so it maybe it, maybe it thinks it can get another duplicate or a host. It just copies her body figure though. I think that's its point. I think that's the point of its existence. Like, yeah, my thing is that like it's just this alien being. It doesn't know anything. It's from somewhere completely different 
it's not trying to hurt anybody. It's just trying to figure out what's going on. And since it's here, it's fucking with the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, I don't and think... that's why everything is changing, and that's why there's a bubble around it, and that's why it's making everything so weird. And it's a threat to the U.S. because it's something different, but this alien isn't trying to do anything. Yeah, I don't think it has a, any intent to hurt or do good. I think it's just living. No. So do you think it's kind of like a virus, where it just attaches to the host and then man- I think, it I think duplicates part- itself? Well, they, they, use the, they use the term virus in the beginning of the movie. <clears throat> yeah. Right, but then they keep talking about cells and genes and stuff like that, and how exactly how a virus works is it attaches to the host, and then it just multiplies itself <clears throat> exponentially. Is there another word for, like, an accidental virus? Because that's what I think this is. I just think that, like, this thing crash-landed, didn't mean to, doesn't know how to get back, and is just trying to figure out a way to get out of this mess. But so is it a part of everything inside the bubble? No. Is but it, like, this hive thing? It being in there, and you, we don't know anything about this, but, like, it crash-landing into the lighthouse, making this own, like, little, like... Like <clears throat> chrome everything yeah. downstairs. It's just like it's it's its own weird fucking thing. And this thing being here on Earth is making everything else weird. See, I think I think back to the beginning of the movie where they made a point to go over how cells work and how one cell just its only purpose is to duplicate and keep duplicating. I I, I kind of correlated that back to this alien thing, where it in order for it like its only job is to duplicate and keep living. And I think it does that through using other people's ho- as hosts or to replicate. I think that's what bothered me about this movie so much is because they put all this work into like the cells and the, like the scientific aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And then it just seems like a, such a, like a lazy thing to do. Like, Oh, it's an alien. Well, it goes 2001, a space odyssey at the very end. Like it just tries to throw <clears throat> unanswerable, unanswerable questions at you. Oh, I know what's like, so they just have to do like the stereotype sci- sci-fi thing. I mean, just for the, our own logic what logic there is it is there here um i think ventress's body was just done and the, the host the alien couldn't use it i think yeah. there's a reason it just it used her for the moment yeah now the apartment walked in and found a better host to replicate i never thought of it that way i kind of like that interpretation um because oscar isaac was perfectly healthy and he got a clone uh-huh so. yeah but did it really have the intentions of doing anything with natalie porton because all it did was just mimic her I think that's all a fast way. Oh, well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, it was mimicking her, and then Natalie Portman attacked, and that's when this being attacked. Did it attack her? Yeah, like, it just, like, smothered her. Remember? Just, like, trying to make her, like, well, stop that, and that, not hurt. Well, that him was her anymore, because she it. ran to the door. Yeah. Uh, but I think if it well, was mirroring her, it would have ran to the opposite wall. Well, if that's it, the if thing, it was, though. If it like, was mirroring her. Well, it wasn't at that point. It was trying to stop her. See, that's why I thought so, too. And I think when it was touching her, there was some kind of absorbing factor going on there. It gave me a rapey vibe. Oh, I definitely. didn't. I yeah. didn't like it at all. It was. Yeah. I was weirded out. It was by disturbing. It. Very yeah. disturbing. Because you wouldn't. You didn't see anything. You just saw a close up of her face and like this just black mass just yeah. like covering her. So let's talk about the alien scene because one. Of the, I think this is one of the best scenes for me is when it's copying her and the music is going nuts Ooh. here. Can can we not even when it's mimicking her when it's that? Did it go into a ball first or was it mimic and then ball? I think like form because she had it? to put blood in, and then that's when it. Mimicked. Yeah, yeah. When it was at like this ball form with like all this light going into it, that looked so cool. Like an, that was endless, like nothing I've ever seen before. Like an endless abyss of like clouds going in and out. Yeah, yeah. And then like she just like dropped a little droplet of blood in, and that's when it started like going and mimicking everything that she did. And that's when it showed the cells thing again earlier. Like it showed one cell, oh, yeah. and it showed it went bloop 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 bloop, and it just mutated very fastly. Yeah. Best. Because when it puked out of Jennifer Jason Lee, that's when it went back into this ball. And Natalie Portman needed to put a thing of her own DNA in order for it to mimic and just kind of like go and look like her. Yeah. <laughs> it, like if you just listen to the whole thing you just said, it like it literally makes no sense. Like, Oh, I think it makes sense. It goes from human form to sphere form and then it gets blood. So then it goes back to human form. I think it, well, I think when it was inside uh, Ventrist, Ventress was still there, but it's just part of her. It's just host. It's just using her as a host. Yeah. So it's been there the whole time. No, I think it went into Ventress when Ventress got there. Found out she, her body is well, not. No, why didn't it just go into everyone else? There was no one else there. Yeah, this thing never left the lighthouse. Every oh, that, that... that's what I just asked. If it was in the White House, in the lighthouse. Yeah, I think it was in the lighthouse from the get go. Yeah, it never. I'm, my thing is that it never moved until like humans went in there and fucked with it. And I don't even know if this is one thing. Like it could have, it could have 
Oscar Isaac's character, which we'll have to get into later, made a replica of itself. Maybe everything that comes into this yeah. lighthouse gets replicated. And again, it's never answered. Like, you know that, like, part of this thing had already left outside of the the Shimmer. Right. But the ball that we get to at the end of the movie is still there. Like, we, we have no idea how this thing works. And here's my theory. I think it's choosing what to host because... The movie makes a point to say that half the people, almost all the people that go into this shimmer are damaged goods. We don't know to the extent of their damage. It could be medically, it could be physically, it could be emotionally. And maybe Oscar Isaac and Natalie Portman's characters are the most sound host that this thing's experienced and is replicating them. So then why does he have like convulsions and like internal organ failure when it when it's duplicate oh, we'll, comes we'll, out? We'll, we'll get to that because I'm, I'm right there with you. So just hang on. When we first see this black mimic alien thing take form... It's not quite scary, but it's, I would argue it's very disturbing looking because it's just emptiness. It's not disturbing. It looked like really bad CGI. Oh, really? That's I what liked, I thought. Yeah. I liked it. That was the worst part. Like, I liked it as a ball, and I liked it when it had, like, bullet uh, traces through it. But just it mimicking her, I didn't like the way that looked, and I just thought it was yeah, uh, I stupid. It, I loved this, it. Last scene actually reminded me a lot of Signs last scene mm-hmm. where, like, honestly, the CGI of the alien tanks. Yeah. And it... it I don't know. It, I don't know. It just seems like a forceful fit mm-hmm. to the ending. So anyway, <laughs> that, that 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 part I didn't like either. I'm there with you. Like, there's some parts that I love, and then there's just like that. Yeah. So I think this is where it's going to get tricky. We're shown a scene where they're both holding a flash bomb or some kind of a grenade, phosphorus grenade. Grenade. Yeah. And we see a tattoo on the alien in Nellie Portman's hand, and they're both holding the grenade at the same time. It they pull it. It blows up. We see what looks like the alien, or the alien, run down back in the chamber on fire, and things start going in flames, and we see Natalie Portman escape the lighthouse. Mm-hmm. That tattoo was not on Natalie Portman when this movie started. That that eight. You guys remember this? It wasn't an eight. It was like a snake eating its own self. Yeah. Like, whatever that's called. Right. Now, this movie, are, you, are you sure? There's, there's a point in the movie where... Um, her and Shepard in the boat, and she's like, "What's wrong with your arm? Because like it's been bruised." Yeah, and that's the same arm with a tattoo. Is that? But that tattoo's not there in the movie yet. So maybe she just gets it from being in the bubble in the shimmer. Like maybe it's fucking with her DNA a little bit. See, that's what I'm thinking too. But here's the <clears> question: Do, Is Natalie Portman who leaves the lighthouse the original Natalie Portman, or has she changed because of the alien interaction, or has that the alien who left the White House? Well, White House. See, I think she self sabotaged herself, pulled it, and knew that this thing. She had to try to kill it. Mm-hmm. I think she self sabotaged. It was not her leaving the light. You don't think so? Not at even, all. Even but the, though but the creature runs down into the thing. <clears throat> yeah, and that's my thinking too. Like when Oscar Isaac, we thought was him, and it was Natalie Portman. Like they went home. Like he escaped and went there. He didn't act like a human being. Nope. He acted very short. He acted like he had PTSD. He just was like very, just nothing with well, her. That, she he, did the same even thing. Like, I like. I remember you, but. He obviously yeah. wasn't in love yeah. with her. She didn't do the same thing. She retold everything that happened. Oh. Yeah. When they start going through everything, she's like, I don't remember. I don't I don't know. I don't remember. Especially like how her comrades died. Yeah. I think that they, was the alien the whole time. I think they acted the in two totally different ways. Because Oscar Isaac did say, I don't remember, I don't remember a lot of things. But Natalie Portman was able to remember a lot. And yeah. she was able to like retell the story and she was the narrator pretty much of this movie. Let me throw this out there, and this is not my point. I'm just curious what your guys' thoughts are. Do you think the alien has a uh, a factor to it where it can merge part of itself with its host, but not all of it? Well, I mean, at the very end when all the eyeballs are moving. Yeah. Like the irises and everything. Right. I don't know. Like, you know that Oscar Isaac is a clone, so it shows those eyes moving first, and then Natalie Portman's eyeballs move. I don't know if that 100% means she's a clone, or if that just means like the DNA that's in her body yeah, is forever changed. I think they've just been genetically mutated, which is what happened in the whole movie. So do you think Oscar Isaac is a clone or just uh, mutated? Well, I think he's dead, dead. Yeah, I think so yeah, too. He's a clone. Like we literally saw him die. Yeah, and I just, I just don't think the clone of him has absorbed completely what his memory or what his emotional <laughs> state would have been. Other than that, he knows that this Lena character was important to him. Yeah. No, I, I think Natalie Portman is real and Oscar Isaac is not. Yeah. That's my reading off of it, and my main thing is that I don't know why she wants to go like back with this guy. Like even after she knows that that's not her husband, she still like goes in there and right tries to like talk and have relations with him. Right, I, and I don't yeah, get both that. their eyes glimmer. Yeah, and gold. Yeah, 
yeah, and I think that's you know, I think it's the point of the, one of the final scenes that you guys will can we discuss that um, it's very open to interpretation. Like I I've read I've read uh, somebody's think thought process was that Nellie Portman switched with the alien and it was her that went down into the thing to destroy it. Like she went into the consciousness of this metallic thing and it was her goal to destroy it and after her it took her body. It's all left very vague. Yeah, but I just that's what I like about it. I know you Brent, you want concrete. Again, there are multiple interpretations as to what the alien actually does to you. Is it like a portion of him getting cloned or is he just like throwing his seed out there with DNA and trying to branch out and take over the world? Like you have no idea. You don't know. I think we were doing a movie Injustice if we didn't put away this or just put aside the sci-fi for now and just talk about um, the relationships in this movie, especially between Natalie Portman and Oscar Isaac. We got a lot of jumps in time showing how we're led to believe that their marriage was solid, right? The mm-hmm. first half. And then we're told that, oh, you're here because you have a... Da- uh, he was... Oscar Isaac signed up for this mission because supposedly he was having a damaged marriage because it ended up that Natalie Portman was cheating on him or kind of cheating on him. Well, thought that he was dead. So after six months, she just decided to try to get over him by uh, having sex. Right. Well, you no, know, she did cheat on him because oh, yeah. he hadn't left yet for the last mission. And she uh, was. I thought that... he'd been away for six months. I yeah. thought they legit said that. No, so at least I'm, maybe I misheard it, but I'm pretty sure he was on one of his missions. He came back, and she was like, "You know what? We're done. I'm not doing this anymore." Oh, see, so yeah, the very no. beginning of the movie is her talking to the professor. Right, it's like he, he's about. been gone for six months to a year now. It's okay to move on. Right, no, but she was she... At, at the very beginning. He says like it's almost been a year. Come over and hang out with us, and then flashbacks say like when he's in bed. He's been gone for six months. You got to get over him, and that's why she's having sex thought, with him. I thought there was one other time where she felt guilty because he wasn't a thought to be dead yet. I think that's this mission. Like because she they, doesn't know anything. Because I'm pretty sure she, at one point they say he. I think he knows that this is happening. I just, um, anyway, she no, she does say that. Yeah, I remember yeah. that too. Yeah, that's why. That's why once you get more information, it's like, oh, maybe they didn't actually have that sort of a relationship. It's never clear cut because the time jumps do happen sporadically. Mm-hmm. But honestly, it's meant to show that Natalie Portman's character wasn't the perfect hero or in- our protagonist that we made her out to be. No, the character development for the, throughout the whole film I thought was pretty good. Yeah, actually, that's the one thing we talk about this relationship is the flashback sequences. Do you guys like them? How it kind of pertained to her mental process in the Shimmer? Well, I don't think it really needed any of that like cheating backstory because I, it didn't do anything for the plot for me. Well... Well, except for the fact that she's like, I owe him. And the whole reason she was going in is because she felt like she owe, owed him. I mean, she could have felt like that without cheating on him. She could have been like a fateful wife and still went after yeah. him. Uh, one thing I want to ask, too, putting, putting this all back together is this movie definitely works on a uh, build-up plot. There's a lot of things building up into this last 30 minutes. Concerning the lead-up, what things you learn, the scenes, everything that works so well, does it pay off for you? Does what pay off? The ending. No, not for me. See, I yeah, I thought it was perfectly fine. Yeah. I, I liked the way this movie ended. There was just a little portion. like There was probably 10 minutes of this movie that I didn't really like. The rest so, of it I was perfectly fine with. I'd be perfectly fine with the way it ended, with just them in the two rooms. and with the, I'd be even okay with the, the glimmer in the eye thing yeah. if they would have just taken away the alien aspect of it. If it had just been this like goop or something that came from in, inside an asteroid from space... And it was just affecting the ground. Oh, I've been pissed if that was the case. That would, uh, that would, that would, why would that have made you? Right back yeah. into... Why would that have made you pissed? Because that's not like that's not. Like I get that would still affect everything in the Earth. Yeah, but like, if, if that's all she found was the goop when she walked into the asteroid, and that's it. That's the that's the climax we get. What if she ate the goop, <laughs> and that's how she had a clone, and that's how that happened? That would have been not still the payoff would have been horrible. Well, that's what I'm I don't saying. Think it, I don't think it changes that much. Like everything in the lighthouse, like is just garbage to me. I don't think no, so. No, I I disagree. I like the alien portion. There's just parts of it that I don't like. Yeah, Why I think it was the payoff for you. I hated the ending. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I let it sit for two days. Maybe I need to go watch it again. Sure. I wasn't completely like mind blown. Like, oh, that's just, this is how it's happening. And the with but the that's payoff, what I wanted. Oh, see, no, I wasn't expecting that. I just wanted. Uh, some more story building and all that jazz. But I, I totally call. I told my wife, "Watch, they're both gonna be aliens at the end, and they're gonna start spreading it." I don't think they spread it. I think the, 
And we don't know if she's an alien exactly. or not. Jeez. We don't know anything. You don't know anything. They I, leave it ambiguous. Yeah, well, it didn't, I like it. It didn't cause too much conversation for me, so it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. It's okay. I guess. It's okay, and that's it's, the first two. It's not a movie for me, so and good, it's not though. a movie for a lot of people. Yeah. That goddamn vomit jelly belly just fucking sticks in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, it consumes the whole thing in your mouth. Uh-huh. And it's okay. All right. That being said, let's jump back into the spoiler-free section. Before we get to the review portion, let's go over some opening box off numbers. Us, we know that Black Panther had dominated the box box office, but Annihilation gave it a valiant effort with eleven million on its opening weekend. <laughs> no, that wasn't valiant at all. It could have been way worse. I think at this eleven million is pretty bad. It's pretty Game bad. Night beat it. Annihilation is very much a niche film. Ooh, can I talk about the whole Netflix thing? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so in the U.S. and China, it got released theatrically, but everywhere else, it went straight to Netflix. This is a movie owned by Paramount. They did the same thing they did with the uh, Cloverfield Paradox. They just everywhere else, they're like, nope, just put it on Netflix. We don't think this movie's going to make its money back. Just take it. So if it helps them make money back, I'm okay with it. <laughs> They're okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how much this deal was for Netflix, but... I'm sure it's probably around the same, probably. I'm hoping so. Right. Uh, Metacritic scores with the critics coming in, averaging out around 80, which I think is fair enough for this movie. 80? Uh, yeah. All right. That being said, it's, we got to give our own review on this movie, and that's going to be a five-star review between the four of us here at Stream Media All-Stars. I'll go ahead and kick it off, because I feel like I'm going to be... the the most optimistic maybe not jake you could weigh in too I, I really like this movie i love the payoff i love the scenery i love the acting a lot of things worked from this movie i had my own tiffs with the ending but it didn't bother as much as you guys i'm going a solid four out of five on this movie i'm gonna let that one stew for a second all right <laughs> four out of five yeah uh like i said i liked most of this movie about two-thirds of it but the last of it stunk so bad for me i'm gonna admit it uh it was watchable 2.5 so an average movie. Yeah. Okay. It's exactly where I went. Two point five. It is not better than Black Panther that I gave three and a half. You that's crazy talk. Yeah. So um so. when I when I first saw this movie, I gave it four out of five right right out of, right out of the bat. Um we've had like three days to sit and stew and I I liked what this movie brought. It has a lot of mixes of everything I like. Last of Us the thing, aliens, like all this stuff. I'm giving this 4.5 out of 5, folks. Wow. I liked it quite a bit, and I know that Brent just really wants to choke me out right now. You thought this was only half a star worse than Blade Runner. Yeah. Yeah. I gave Blade Runner 3.5. Well, I know you did, but I'm talking yeah. to him. Uh-huh. Yeah. I thought it was the best movie of 2017. Oh, I know. And he gives us yeah. half a star less. I also uh-huh. love like AI and robotic stuff like that. So do I. I just can't believe I rated it higher than you. Yeah, me too. That's crazy. Yeah, there's some things that just didn't work for me in this movie, but I I really like this movie. This is also a movie that might get better for me with over time. I'm thinking so too, because I think I might see this again, and I might bump up to a 4.5. Mm-hmm. And I know you guys, we kind of talked about this earlier, but I got a feeling this is gonna be in my top 10 for 2018. Yeah, that's fine. We'll keep it out of ours, <laughs> so don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, Jesus, this is this is definitely it. my favorite movie of the year so far. It it beats Black Panther out of the water in my opinion. Yeah, same here. Yeah. But well, we couldn't end this conversation without comparing it to other Alex Garn films, which such as Ex Machina, 28 Days Later, Dread, which are kind of mostly sci-fi, but they're kind of over the board for his tones. How do you guys like this compared to those other movies? See, this is where it's hard, because I think this is as good as Ex Machina. I really liked Ex Machina, and I thought I liked it more than this, just out of the theater. Yeah. But thinking back about it, they're pretty on par with me. Do you like this better than Ex Machina? I like this better than 28 Days Later. Dread's more like an action movie to me, for sure. Yeah, but Dread's awesome. Dread yeah. is awesome. Dread's so good. Yeah. I saw, I think this is better than Dread. I probably would have gave Dread a 4 out of 5. Yeah. 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 3.5 out of 4. Yeah. Uh-huh. 3.5 <laughs> or 4 for me. Sure. I mean, I'll go on record to say I think this is probably Garland's best film yet. It's close. I need to watch Ex Machina again, but I remember watching that movie and just being amazed that this was his first movie. Yeah, yeah. I haven't actually seen that. But, Ever? You haven't? Mm-mm. Oh, it's good. But 28 Days, 28 days Later I liked. Yeah, and I loved Dread. One. I yeah, actually love that Dread movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He also uh, wrote Sunshine, if any of you have seen that. I don't know uh-uh. if you have. He just loves sci-fi movies, and hmm. I'm glad we have somebody like him that can give us movies like this. Exactly. Yeah. So good. Yep. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the trivia portion of our show. And Brent is back in the trivia hot seat with brand new clips for all three who are participating tonight. Jake, 
and Anthony, myself. <laughs> so I'm <Wow>. John. <laughs> You're not Anthony. <laughs> yeah. And Anthony, myself. Yes. John. So, Brent. <laughs> I love that you announced everyone, uh-huh. but you put yourself in the middle. Like, yeah, you did. Yeah. Brent, he did it like seating yeah. order. <laughs> yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Brent, real quick, recap the rules. All right, I'm going to play three clips. One, <clears throat> Once I play the full clip, uh, you guys will guess in an order. Um, we'll determine that here in just a second. Uh, you guys will go guess, guess, guess. I'll read half the clues. If you still haven't gotten it, I'll read the second half of the clues. So to- a total of three guesses. Um, and then I will go to the next clip, and then we'll just keep going in a circular motion for who guesses first. Who's starting first? Jake, to go first. Okay. So... Are we ready? Yep. Let's do it. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> your ass right here. Oh, great. Another asshole was a fetish for Asian girls? God, they get so old. Oh, shit. What's your name, girl? My name? Get your ass out of here, okay? It's take a crude, overly obvious come on to every woman who walks past and cram it. That's my name. Who do you think you're talking to? Who does it look like? You think you real funny, don't you? Oh, huh? Shit. Oh, she tough. What? You gonna hit me now? That pretty much completes the picture. Hey, you need to keep your bitch on the leash. I have no <laughs> idea what this is. I don't know. I'm gonna guess two Wong Fu. No. Damn. Friday. No. Kung Pao entered the chicken. <laughs> no. <laughs> Gross. Uh, interesting choice. All right. Isn't that enter the fist or is it enter the chicken? I think it's enter the chicken. I'm pretty sure it's enter the chicken. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This came out in 2008. Oh, wow. <clears throat> it is a drama. It is rated R. Its budget was $33 million and it IMDB gave it an 8.2 out of 10. Once you know what it is, it'll make perfect sense. Is it Black Snake Moan? No. Damn. I like that, that movie. A good guess. That's a good movie, though. Yes, it mm-hmm. is. Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. It's not I guess yes. you can go. Oh, are we going in order? No. Ding dong. Uh, yeah, clockwise. Yeah, you uh, eat, it's not Jake, John, Anthony, myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. Well, Anthony, I did your favorite. Well, it's not Charlie's John got Angels. rid of a terrible guess for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, that was on the tip of my tongue. Next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> is that actually a movie? Yes. yes. Oh God, no. All right. Here's the giveaway. Its gross income was $269 million. Uh, the actors are Clint Eastwood, B. Vang, Christopher oh. Carley, Ani Her, Brian Howe, William Hill, and directed by Clint Eastwood. Gran Torino. Oh. Correct. Yep. Get off my lawn. So the acting sounded a little rough in that. That movie's horrible. I totally wiped that movie from my memory. People liked it. All right. Not great. Anthony, you ready? Yep. Clip number two. If I don't get it right, someone else says. So I'm going to just go with the obvious Ice Age. It is. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Yep. Ray. Ray Morano. <laughs> yep. yep. <Nice>. Debra. <laughs> yep. All right, Brent, come number three for me. Here we go. Have a lot of time, honey. Whatever you got to say, say it now. How about giving us a big smile? <sighs> no? What are you doing? not what i thought it was yeah i thought it was something else too but i think i might have a guess is it wanted incorrect is this boondock saints incorrect damn it yeah i thought i knew it until the end part Mm -hmm. um gunshots threw me off smoke and aces incorrect all right uh 2000 action adventure thriller 
PG-13, budget of $125 million. IMDb gave it a 6.1 out of 10. Uh, Matrix Reloaded? No. I'll say The Matrix, but it's wrong. Mm-mm. Okay. Not Wild Wild West. No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'll just read them all off because you're going to get it. Action, adventure, thriller, came out in 2000, PG-13, directed by John Woo. Actor list, Tom Cruise, Doug Ray Scott, Ving Rhames, Richard Roxburgh, Thandel Newton, budget of $125 million, grossed $565 million, and like I said, a rating of 6.1 out of 10. It's a Mission Impossible, but I don't know if it's the first one or... No, which one, the first one came out later, or earlier. Mission Impossible 3? No. Mission Impossible 2. Uh, John Woo. Are we going to do that, though? Because Mission Impossible, I was just going to take it. Are you serious? I don't know. I didn't make the rules. Three was J.J. Abrams. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I stopped caring about numbers earlier. We can do a three-way tie. That's fine. Okay. Are we can just do a tiebreaker? Break- yeah. I mean, yeah. I was I was literally going to take Mission Impossible anyways. Yay. Sorry. I'll take it. <laughs> this will be in the running. I, might, I wasn't going to say it. Say what? I wasn't going to say Mission Impossible. That's oh, really? That I had next. Well, oh, wow. not, a- not after the clues, but I mean... After Tom Cruise? Before. Uh, before. Never mind. Oh, yeah. before. I should have got it with that dumb music. Yeah. Because that, yeah, that sounded totally John like John Woo. Yeah. Just this first to say it. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately. The plan of real Diamond Porter. Sandlot. Good enough to lick the third Damn, that was quick. The music. Yep. Uh, uh, Shut up, idiot. Moron. With the tiebreaker, Jake takes the win with the Sandlot. God, Mission Impossible 2, that's like one of the worst ones. It is yeah. the worst one, without a question. Yeah. Duh. They do like bike foo. Yeah, that was so it's bad. It's so yeah. stupid. That's why it's so hard to get. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> yeah. You block it out of your memory. Doves everywhere. It's not good. It's not good. 10,000 masks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, watch every one but that one. Yeah. All right, that being said, that has been episode 32 of Super Media All-Stars. You can find us on all kinds of social media. The first one being Facebook. Please like and follow us there. You can find us on Twitter at SmashPod. You can find us on Instagram at Super Media All-Stars. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Steelbook Obsessed. I started my video game Steelbooks. Nice. Yeah, and you can also follow me on Letterboxd if you want to hear my reviews early. And you can follow me underneath Steelbook. Nice. You can listen to Super Media All Stars on your Apple Podcast services. You can listen to us on Google Play on Android PC. If you're an internet user, you can listen to us on TuneIn Radio. Please like and follow us on all those subscriptions. But guys, thank you for joining me. Audience, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Moist panties. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> I am out of here.